This morning, uh, we are continuing our study uh, of uh, the doctrinal position, uh, what we believe the Bible teaches uh, about doctrine. Uh, there are uh, some foundational truths that are absolutely necessary for the Christian faith. The subject today is grace, particularly grace in the new creation. We'll include some things in the conclusion. Grace begins with God and has to continue from God for successful Christian living. The simplest definition of grace is the free favor of God. Grace is free. Free grace. There's a verse in Romans 5, 6. If it is of grace, talking about salvation, it is no longer of works. If it is works, it is no longer of grace. Grace is pure. 100% of God, 0% of man. Many people, many denominations, many clergy, many religious organizations, many denominations have a problem with what I just said. They cannot, humanity cannot get past that it's all of God and none of man. We just can't get past this thing that surely there's something that I have to do. The answer is there is nothing you and I can do Amen. to get saved and to live the Christian life without continuing grace. The verse that is best known that you all know is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works. And why is it that way? So that man can't boast. So, uh, grace. May I say, as a personal observation, I am absolutely convinced that most people fall short of their belief in biblical grace. And grace comes from God to us as sinners and uh, what that really says if you get to digging deeper into that down to the heart it really says God is sovereign he doesn't give us grace because we deserve it by the way to that everybody ought to say thank God and amen but free grace supposes correctly the sovereignty of God. Folks, the, the Bible knows no other God but one that is absolutely 100% sovereign in his dealings with us. It's one of the... There are a number of, of uh, characteristics about God. Uh, God is love. Uh, there's the wrath of God. There's the mercy of God. We have a hard time as human beings getting past this thing that God is good to us because He loves us because that's what He is. Amen. Amen. He doesn't love us because we 
deserve it. Anybody here really think you deserve that God should be good to you? Well, of course not. I think uh, we have another problem today. Uh, it's something that's kind of been developing for, I would say, about 50 years now. It's what they call cheap grace. Cheap grace. What do I mean by cheap grace? Um, that it doesn't cost anything. That God owes it to us. That uh, oh, let's see how else I want to word that. That because there's grace, there's no penalty for sin. Because there's grace, God forgoes His justice. Uh, because there's grace, He overlooks our sins. The modern term for that is cheap grace. God is so against sin. God is so angry at sin. God said the the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And the only way that, because God said that, the only way for you and I to be saved is not that God overlooks our sins, but that Jesus Christ took our sins in Him. On Him. And took Him to the cross. There's nothing cheap or free about grace to God. It is to us, but not to God. It cost him his son. Amen. So grace, uh, God's free favor, but it's not cheap or free to God. I have told you this statistic before, well over 50% of the church going public. Now, let me qualify that. That's everybody. That would be Catholic, Baptist, and everybody in between. Methodist, Lutheran denominations, free will, uh, EMA, AMA, conservative, uh, non-denominational, charismatic, Pentecostalist, everybody, but over half the public that is attending church this morning, some in America, do not believe that salvation is all by grace. Over half the public believes that there's something we have to do. The Bible doesn't teach that. The other side, the flip side of that coin, so to speak, is this business of eternal security. If salvation is totally by grace, then it has to be eternal security. You can't separate the two. Just like you can't say separate, you can't separate uh, 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 justification, salvation, and sanctification. The two are connected. So you can't separate pure grace from eternal security. Now, if you mix grace with man having to do something, you've automatically destroyed the eternal security of the believer. If it's all of God, grace, then eternal security is a part of that. If it's, if it's only part of God and part of man, since we clearly, biblically, can't do anything to help our spiritual condition till God steps in, you also either have or don't have eternal security. And so it's not surprising, not, not only today do we have over half the pub, church going public, uh, that, that, that doesn't believe it's all of grace, you also now have over half the church going public do not believe in eternal security. In other words, if you were to ask them, can a person lose his salvation, they're going to say yes. 
So this is really important. So, uh, I have uh, put this into six categories. We'll take them one at a time, and uh, I'll just give you some scripture for each, and then it, uh, and I'll plan on being done in plenty of time to show how grace begins at salvation, but continues your whole life. There is in the Bible a doctrine called the walk of grace. It's in Romans. A walk of grace. Look, God gives us physical life one breath at a time. God withholds the second breath of God. God gives us grace one step at a time. We live by grace. We work by grace. We walk by grace. We're saved by grace. And, and, and if God were for one minute to withhold walking grace, spiritually we'd stumble. So this is very important. So uh, grace in the new creation uh, first of all, we believe that in order to be saved, sinners must be born again. New birth. Spiritual birth. John 3.3 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's a tremendously important verse. First of all, when Jesus said, Verily, verily, what he's really saying is, listen up folks, pay attention, this is earth-shaking important. Very, very. I'll say unto thee, God says, except a man be born again. Spiritual birth, not physical birth. Spiritual birth. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot what? Get saved. And, and, and I want to say this to Christians because we have so joined together the church and the world, especially in our country today, that uh, we, we expect unbelievers to act like Christians. We've got all these um, good in themselves societies and organizations and conventions to try to influence the Christian fiber into the moral fiber of lost people. While they must hear that, they can't do it. You cannot, you cannot, 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 cannot. I think we need to learn while it is right for them to hear truth, which is to draw them to Christ, but until the Spirit of God touches their heart, they can't. Now, that's a tough pill to swallow. But Jesus said, cannot see the kingdom of God. Spiritual things have to be spiritually discerned, and they cannot be spiritually discerned until the Holy Spirit quickens or saves that person. So, uh, we believe that in order to be saved, sinners must be born again. And number two, that the new birth is a new creation in Christ Jesus. A new creation in Christ Jesus. A lost man has nothing that God wants or wants to fix. Getting saved is not a makeover. It is not a remodel job of the old nature. It's a completely new spiritual from God principle that comes within. And that then in turn leads to what we call the word sanctification. If we begin a life of conforming to the Lord Jesus Christ. New birth is a new creation in Christ. Spiritually, we're put in Christ, and Christ is in us. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17 is probably the verse you would know best. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Born again, spiritually. Old things. What, what are the old things there? Well, first of all, it's the law. The law is fulfilled for you by Christ. The second thing, the second you get saved. Old things. But also this speaks of sanctification. Instead of the bar on Saturday night, it, with the bar crowd, it's church on Sunday morning with the Christian crowd. And a million more things. The inside, new, must come out. Behold, all things are become new. Instantly saved. But then the lifelong working out what's in. A man being Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. It's a new creation in Christ Jesus. Number three, that is instantaneous and not a process. The Pentecostal or Pentecostal friends are uh, our, our word of faith friends are some, some, of, some of those folks uh, they have it wrong that you have to work at getting saved. No. You work at living the Christian life after you're saved. But you don't work at getting saved. The new birth is instantaneous. It is not a process. The second you believe and put your faith in Christ, the Spirit of God comes in and you are created in Christ Jesus unto new life. You are born again. Amen. The process is after you are saved. You work at it. Christian living the whole life. Uh, let me give you some verses. Luke 5, 27, Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and he left all, rose up and followed him. He got saved. 1 John 5, 1, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is, not will be or shall be, but is, born of God. John 6, 3, and John 3, 6 and 7, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. We all understand that. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Let me read you Acts 16.30. And brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt. Present active. Shalt. Be saved. Salvation is an instant thing. Now, if we had anything to do with it, it couldn't be an instant thing. But we don't. It's the gift of God. Then, in the new birth, the one dead in trespasses and sins is made a partaker of the divine nature and receives eternal life which is a free gift from God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation is a free gift It is from God. When it is received, the spiritual principle of eternal life 
is immediately, instantaneously implanted. It's all grace. When, when you understand the principles involved in salvation, it's, it becomes increasingly obvious it's all grace. It's all the work of God. Furthermore, the new creation, the spiritual life implanted, the new creation brought about in a manner, it, it is, a, is, a, is brought about in a manner above our comprehension. People say, well, when I understand it, I'll get saved. No. You begin to understand because you're saved, not to get saved. When God does that supernatural spiritual work and the Spirit of God comes in, you receive that by faith, not by understanding. You may know that something has happened. You, you, you will begin to notice slight differences in life and convictions, whether that be joy or tears or depending on your personality. But, but it's a spiritual thing that is incomprehensible. It's beyond our comprehension because it's not by culture. It's not by character. It's not by the will of man. But it's holy and solely by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with truth, the Word of God, and it secures our voluntary obedience to the gospel. Now, that fourth thing that I just read to you, I could spend about two hours getting complicated, which I'm not going to do. Let me just show you some good scriptures. 2 Peter 1, 4, whereby are given unto succeeding great and precious promises, the Word of God, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. The Word of God is spiritual seed. When you take that in, then the Holy Spirit quickens that which is just a more technical way of saying you receive Christ and are saved. And you will begin to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. That is the part of the living it out the rest of your life. Romans 6.23, you know this one, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Ephesians 2.1, you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Well, how dead is dead? Go down the morgue. Go down there to Stephen's funeral. Let's say he's got three bodies. Are you going to find one that's maybe a little dead? One that's a little more dead and one that's really dead because he got chopped up in a car wreck. No, dead is dead. Lost man hates this thought. If you're dead, there's absolutely nothing, 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 nothing that you can do for your salvation other than when it is presented, the Holy Spirit touches your heart and you receive. You are the quickened. That's like Jesus watching the funeral procession of a young man and mother weeping behind. And he walks up there and he stops him and he touches the beer, the old word for casket. And he speaks, just like he said to Lazarus, come forth. He speaks quickened, supernatural. seed in the ground. The rest is up to God. Right, Brother Hunt? Is that, is that technically correct? 
Same thing with salvation. Sinners are dead in their sins. Spiritually dead. Only God can speak the word. And the, quick, the Holy Spirit will quicken that word. And we are raised. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them, committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We, we speak to people. Colossians 2, 13. And you being dead in your sins, the wages of sin is death, spiritual death, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, dead spiritually, hath he quickened together with him have been forgiven you all your trespasses. We say a man hears the gospel from the human side, a man hears the gospel, uh, he's convicted and uh, he bows and he confesses his sins and he receives the Lord. But what's really going on there is he's heard the word, the spiritual seed. It's put in here and the Holy Spirit touches it and it's quickened, and that person is born again, and then begins, etc., 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 etc. All right. Uh, I have to get to the last point. This this matter of, of a grace in the new creation, the proper evidence. That the soul has been quickened and is, as we would call it, saved by God, supernaturally graced. The proper evidence appears in the holy fruit of repentance and faith and newness of life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, faith. We have natural faith. If I go over there and unlock the door, it's going to open. It's natural faith. But to receive Christ and to acknowledge redemption and to act on it is spiritual faith that comes from God. That comes from God. Uh, Ephesians 5, 9, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You don't do goodness and righteousness and truth to get saved. You begin to do goodness and truth and righteousness because you are saved. The proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Now, this last point, folks, we got a real problem there in, in dealing with, uh, I'll use a loose word, Christendom. We meet so many people. I go out on visitation. I've started visiting again because I've got my two shots and it's, you know, I'm not. I just decided at some point in time, man, we got, you know, I'm tired of using the telephone. Uh, it's just time to get in homes. And so I've started doing that again. It's amazing, folks, you, you say, have you received Christ as you say, oh, yes. But, boy, there's absolutely zero of anything as far as fruit. A fruit tree that is alive and healthy is going to bear fruit. Brother Hunt, would that be a true statement? A fruit tree that's alive and healthy is going to bear fruit. A Christian that is true, a, a person who is truly born again, slowly but surely, eventually, there will be fruit. Okay, let me see. So that's enough about grace and the new birth. Uh, we've discussed, let me, let me say four things. Number one, grace for salvation. I've discussed that. Let's talk about grace for living. Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He was 4.16. That's not talking about grace salvation. Now we're talking about grace for living. 
Folks, the grace that saves is the grace that keeps. The grace that keeps is the grace that helps you live the Christian life. Number three, there is grace in crises. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Paul had this terrible physical problem. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He prayed to God, remove it. And God said, no, I'm not going to remove it, but I will give you grace to bear it. Peter talked about in 2 Peter 3, 18, growing in grace. That's not talking about growing in your salvation. That's instant. That's talking about growing by grace, by the grace of God in the Christian life. And then finally, there's a grace that none of us have right now. But you will. And that's grace at death. If now this assumed you are a believer, and this is assumed you have been living a Christian life, when it finally, unless, you, unless something happens and you die instantly, but most people, because of the aging process of our bodies, we die slowly. But when that time comes, the Bible promises grace. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 4, 6 to 8. Let me read that, then I've got to quit. First Thessalonians 4, 6 to 8. I believe that is... And the wrong tag. Wrong verse. I'm sorry. Can I make one mistake this morning? How about two or three? All right. When Paul realized and knew for sure that his hour of death was imminent, what did he say? He said, I am ready. If you're a believer, and when the time finally comes, and you're made aware of that, that grace will be there for that. Thank God for the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. That is where we are going to stop. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, why don't you take a little break and uh, move around a little bit. And uh, we will continue shortly. Amen. I love that.